The axis of the Earth is an imaginary line on which the Earth rotates. The two poles, both the axis and the Earth, are tilted at an angle of 23 and a half degrees during a revolution. A revolution. A revolution. A revolution. Welcome to our Plastic Free Schools session. I'm Emily. This is Laura. Hello. And this is Annie. Hello. We're from a charity called Surfers Against Sewage and we're here to help make your school a plastic free school. Sound good? But first, let's do a little warm up activity that will help us figure out some things that we have in common. So every time I say something that is true for you, I want you to raise something in the air. So it could be your hands, your feet, your elbows. You ready? Ready. Ready. I swim. I surf. I care about the ocean. The ocean makes me feel happy. It looks like we're all in this together, so let's get stuck in. Well, let's start by telling you a little bit about who we are and what Plastic Free Schools is. So, who are Surfers Against Sewage and what's that got to do with plastic? So, Surfers Against Sewage are a national campaigning charity that works hard to create ocean activists everywhere. And we do this because we know that in order to thrive as people, we need a thriving ocean. So, we started by campaigning on the terrible impact of sewage on the ocean. And we still work on this, but we also cover areas such as the climate crisis, solutions on how we can help our oceans recover, and yep, you guessed it, plastic pollution. And what about plastic free schools? Well, Plastic Free Schools is a programme that you can run in your school to help tackle the problem of plastic pollution. There are five objectives to complete to become a Plastic Free School, and the very first step is to get your teacher to sign up to the programme for free on our website, plasticfreeschools.org.uk, and then we'll just send you everything you need to get started. But I think you don't want to wait, so should we get started right now? We're going to spend some time today looking into positive solutions to tackle the problem of single-use plastic. Okay, let's get stuck in. So many of our environmental problems have stemmed from the way that we design the things we use on a daily basis. From the early 1900s, we started to design the way that we use things quite differently. Does anyone know why? Well, that's when plastic came on the scene. That's right, plastic hasn't been around forever. In fact, despite the first man-made plastic being discovered in the early 1800s, plastic really started to take off only about 60 years ago changing our world forever. Now, did you know that every day, approximately 8 million pieces of plastic pollution find their way into the ocean? Let me ask you another question. Do you know how long it takes for plastic to decompose, so meaning to break down? Well, it can be up to a shocking 500 years. And even then, it's just broken down into smaller and smaller pieces, so tiny you wouldn't be able to detect them, but they're still there. Plastic is everywhere and can be a very useful material if, you, if it's used in the right way. You might be sitting on a plastic chair right now or at a plastic table, and those plastic products will be around for many years being used every day without polluting the environment. But there is a particular type of plastic that needs your pupil power as it is causing harm, and that's single-use plastic. The stuff that is made to be used once and then thrown away. This is the plastic that we need to stop using and stop producing. Now, we know that plastic, and particularly single-use plastic, hasn't been around forever. So how did we live without using all of the disposable plastic items that we rely on so much in almost all walks of life today? 
Simple. We used alternatives. We used stuff that just satisfied our need instead of catering to our greed. For example, instead of using plastic bags, we used paper bags. Instead of using single-use wipes, we used cloths that we washed and reused. And instead of using single-use plastic containers, we used metal or glass reusable containers. Easy. So there are safer, more environmentally friendly and sustainable ways to help save the planet from complete plastic pollution devastation. As always, knowledge is power. The more we know, the more positive change we can make, not just in our local communities, but in the systems that shape our daily lives. And we can definitely make simple changes, such as buying from plastic free stores and encouraging our families to do the same, to help drive the positive change we want to see in the world. Hang on a minute. I think we're about to be interrupted. I think there's an important message coming in. To solve this system of equations by addition, our first goal is to cancel out one of the variables. Would you like to help us eliminate plastic pollution? Our actions are inspiring waves of positive environmental change. Together we can create plastic free schools. We are boycotting single use plastic. We are stirring the flow of plastic pollution. Never underestimate the power of your voice. We are asking our local MPs to support our work. We are creating a plastic free legacy. Let's eliminate single use plastic together. You are the resistance. We are the resistance. Power to the pupils. Wow, what do you think? Are you ready to join the resistance and become an ocean activist? Now we know that lots of you might have been working really hard to eliminate single-use plastics from your school already but there's always more that can be done. We're going to get to work now, and in this activity, we want to challenge you and your school to find ways to become even more single-use plastic-free. Time to grab your worksheet. Let's start with step one. First, we want you to identify your top three single-use problem plastics in your school. That might be the clean film in your canteen, wrapping up leftover brownies, or the tons of single-use plastic pens that get thrown away because people forget to put the lids back on. Or throw away dessert pots. Yep, I'm afraid to say your beloved chalky mousse might come in something that isn't great for the planet. You can use the first part of your worksheet for this, so that's this bit here. Teachers, we reckon about three minutes should do it for this, so you can pause the video here and we'll see you in a moment. Okay, time's up. So now that you've successfully identified the problem plastics that are causing you angst and preventing you from sleeping at night, it's time to find out the impact that these are having on the environment. But how do we figure that out? Well, we're going to need some marine saving maps so we can dig a bit deeper to find out the extent of which these single-use plastics are having on the environment. For step two, Use the second part of your worksheet to work out how much of those items you use per day, week, month, year. I think another three minutes should do it. Teachers, hit pause and we'll see you in a moment. Okay, time's up. Now, we know they annoy you, what can you do about it? We want you to come up with your very own pupil power problem plastic plan. That's tricky to say, but easy to do. You're all familiar with the five W's, right? Of course you are. So we want you thinking about the different steps that you need to take in order to make these changes possible. Taking into consideration the who, the what, the where, the when, the why, and the sneaky sixth letter H, the how. So, for example, who in your school do you need to contact? 
What alternatives can your plastic items be replaced with if necessary? Where in the school are you initiating this change? When do you plan on removing these items? Why is this important to you? And how are you going to ensure that your problem plastics stay out of your school for good? For step three, use the last section on the back of your worksheet. You've got five minutes to come up with your pupil power problem plastics plan. So teachers, this is your cue to hit pause again. We cannot wait to see what you come up with. Off you go. Stop the clock. How did you get on with your pupil power problem plastics plans? It's a bit of a tongue twister, isn't it? I wonder how fast you can say it without tripping up. Go on, give it a go. People power problem plastics plan. People power problems plastic plan. People power. Okay, moving swiftly on. You can use these fantastic people power problem plastic plans to contribute towards achieving objective one, action plan, and objective five, challenging yourselves on the plastic free school program. When you think of yourselves as just a small class of pupils, it may seem super overwhelming to try and affect positive change. But today, all of you together have already taken incredible steps towards making real change happen. Thank you so much for joining us today. We hope that you've had as much fun as we have. Don't forget to get your school signed up to Plastic Free Schools and keep up the great work. Power to the pupils!